we have uh, mr sanjay kumar paul and uh, he is the pharmaceutical sales expert started his journey from representative and he is in top level in sales and uh, in one of the largest company of the world and uh, he has been very very successful in the sales since starting of his career let's listen to him what he says about sales especially in the pharmaceutical industry how it happens let us go a little bit in deep and ask him some of the question like i'll ask him some of the question like how was his journey is mr sanjay kumar paul how was his journey during his childhood days yes mr sanjay kumar paul okay um thank you so much mr abhishek uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk in such platform and uh, thank you for your viewers who are listening to us uh well to start with i would say that uh, you know my childhood days actually i spent my childhood days in a very small town of uh, bihar At that time it used to be bihar now it is jharkhand and uh, my initial schooling and my education happened there well being a small town we uh, you know as a child we never had a lot of exposures like we will be having in a big city of uh, you know metros or something so we were very much confined within our friends and we were we were much into our school activities and then once we are out of the school activities we came back home we used to uh, spend a lot of time with our friends okay rather than which is very unlikely today it happens that you know the kids they they spend more time with the electronic gadgets rather than their friends so uh, and during our time it was just the opposite we never had much gadgets except a television or a radio or a, or a tape recorder so but we used to spend more more and more of time with our friends and let me tell you uh, uh, mr abhishek as a kid i was i was very very notorious and uh, i never liked to study like most kids i never never liked to study and i was more into you know other activities like sports you know cultural activities like other co curricular activities and all those things so i constantly uh, you know i used to get pressurized from my parents that you need to study you need to study which i which i definitely hated hated during that time but anyhow uh, you know slowly when 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 i understood the value of it we had to because without education without knowledge there is nothing which you can gain in this world and obviously uh, if you are talking about my childhood days as i told you that uh, you know the school i used to go uh, that gave and that actually contributed a lot in what i am today because being a kid you know how you become an individual all depends obviously your your parents are there your family values are there but definitely you know you are spending most of the time valuable time in the school where your teachers your you know your principal your your other uh, you know uh, friends you know you learn a lot of things there and i was very lucky that i studied in a school which which i'm proudly i can say like it still stands one of the top most schools in that particular city and probably in india chinmay mission so and uh, i was very lucky to have good teachers and good mentors and inside that and this is exactly you know how how i spent my my childhood i used to play a lot of pranks with my friends a lot of mischiefs it was full of all those things so it was never it was never a very or uh, you know tough going or or hard as a kid so i would i would say that i grew up uh, very comfortably uh used to be like present to me here in a black shirt so it's like It was very smooth and it was very good. 
okay so in in those days who used to be your hero well uh, see if you talk about hero i never had one single hero i had heroes because uh, frankly speaking my hero uh, who is still today my my hero is my father different reasons i had heroes for different different reasons and i used to see you know i used to visualize myself let's say into their roles okay as because as i told you that i was more into co curricular activities i was more into sports okay so my heroes in different sports were different people uh, obviously at home you know as i told you that uh, my father still he is my hero because i have learned a lot of things from him he has taught me a lot of values and uh, i still believe on those values and yes if you talk about other heroes one of my biggest hero all time hero would be maradona i was a football freak so i love seeing maradona play mm -hmm. those times though they were not much of television only we could see those people uh, you know during the world cups so there were no much uh, you know club games and things like that now and now today you open a, a sports channel you see all these club games you know so you never had to uh, you never had a chance to see the club games but yes during world cup they used to be you know maradona was one of my hero but when it comes to cricket and other sports there were a lot of heroes when when i used to play one particular game i used to feel that okay i become i should become like him i used to play cricket i, I used to feel that i should become like uh, you know sunil gavaskar when i used to uh, you know play uh you know badminton it was like i used to play right my feet or something i mean uh, some uh, prakash padukone or something when i used to play like different sports vijay amrita all those guys were there so different different yeah and once upon a time i remember i, I wanted to be like uh, you know andre agassi the is you know london is player and uh, i ended up even uh, you know putting an ear <laughs> into my ear because that was a fashion that he used to follow so it was a mixed thing i was a kid so the uh, you know keep keep the hero uh, in my mind kept on changing as as my role changes in different different activities but yes uh, my real hero uh, would be still would be my father uh, let us uh, let us come back to the professional life let us come back to the professional life which you are living now and uh, how you came to pharmaceutical industry okay well uh, as i come from an engineering background i mean my engineering family all of uh, most of the people in my family used to be an engineer all right my my dad himself was an engineer my uncle was an engineer so there was always you know a pressure to get into an engineering college to do an engineer yes i to some extent i liked it uh, it's not that i completely hated engineering i liked it but i when i grew up a bit uh, you know maybe in my class 12 or 11th or something i decided no i don't want to do Uh, you know, in engineering or something, because during those days, you know, there were not many avenues. There were like very few avenues. Either you need to be a doctor, or you need to be an engineer, or you need to be, you know, an, an uh, you know, a lawyer or or, or, or a chartered accountant or something like that. Because there were no much avenues, and people never knew about uh, you know different different courses, different avenues. You know, dental was one of the thing which was very popular during those days. Uh, but once i came out of uh, you know that phase you know like then 11th and 12th i decided no i would never do engineering and uh, i would i would i was little inclined towards medical and i knew that uh, you know to get into medical is really really very difficult because those those days it used to be an all india entrance test and it used to be very tough to crack those exams and then there used to be uh, you know other exams for some other courses and suddenly when i was going to talking to a lot of people about some new courses uh, you know i came across 
uh, a course called Bachelor in Pharmacy. Now, I did not know much about it. Neither my parents knew much about the Bachelor in Pharmacy. What was the course all about? So we started, you know, knowing about the course first, learning about the course first, what was the course. And then I learned that this was a course where you could learn, uh, you know, about the making of a particular drug. So you could learn that how these drugs are manufactured, how this works inside the body, and uh, what could go wrong if you if you do not take these drugs in a recommended course or in a in a recommended uh, you know way. So it sounded a bit interesting to me, and I thought that okay, fine, I should give a shot. And that's exactly how I came into this pharmaceuticals. I got into a pharmaceutical, you know, pharmacy college, and then completed it. And immediately, I completed my pharmacy. I was lucky enough to get a job into the pharmaceutical uh, industry. And uh, being a fresher, I knew nothing. I knew I knew very little about that pharmaceutical world that time. Only the things which I could know from my seniors, which I could know from my lecturers. These were the only things because during those days there were no smartphones, there were no internet, okay, where you can just Google it up and you can just in just a click away. You know, we, we say nowadays anything and everything is a click away. So you want to know anything, you just click and click of a button, you know everything. It was it was it was not so during our days. But somehow I got through and when I started my journey into this profession. Um, you know, in a tenure of 21 years, I have learned a lot of things, uh, you know, and kept on, I started, definitely started as a medical executive, uh, you know, sales executive, a medical rep, and then grew on as the time went, as the opportunity came, went on. <laughs> so what is the, like, uh, secret of your success in pharmaceutical industry? Because people find it extremely difficult because more than six lakhs people are working in, uh, you can say even more than that and uh, you become so successful even people who completes their uh, bsc ba become they enter into this field and this field becomes extremely extremely competitive how you grew in this competitive environment what steps you took what is the advice you want to give it to the people well uh, mr abhishek uh, i would agree with you that you know uh, like other professions uh, pharmaceutical sales as well this is too it's not very easy it's a very demanding profession you know be it be in terms of your availability be it be in terms of you know your commitment be it be in terms of your you know physical agility it's, it's like it's, it's a complete uh, you know you should be a, you know we always say the guys who work in pharmacy it's the complete package <laughs> all right so uh, when we say this uh, you know he the first thing he should be like he should be somebody who can take challenge Challenges. And if you, if you talk to me, if you ask me, you know, one thing which I always had in me from the childhood itself, that I always used to, you know, accept challenges. Whether it was, it was posed by somebody else or whether it was a challenge which was, which was taken up by myself. And most of the time it used to be a challenge which I used to give, I used to make to myself that, Okay, this is what I'm challenging you, you cannot do it. Like, so, there used to be always a two minds, you know, you see, there were two minds. So I always had a two minds, one mind talking to the other, saying that, okay, today, uh, you know, I give you this task, let's see if we can complete it or not. And I challenge you cannot. The other mind says that, okay, it was like a two, there were two people talking inside me. So, this is how I used to, uh, you know, like, motivate or move myself second thing as i was i was just telling you is the motivation all right so to be successful in in pharmaceutical sales 
you need to have a lot of a lot of qualities i'm not talking about uh, you know the skills the skills automatically comes to you by time the skills can be incorporated to you by the trainings which are given to you by the corporates which you are working in okay but there are certain things which you which should be there in you like as i was telling you you should be self motivated because many a times see in a sales profession obviously you are monitored but you do not you are not working in a closed environment you are not working in an office where you know your boss you know is constantly having a watch on you or something yes even on sales in like your boss will be having a watch on you but maybe not directly but there what happens is like it's very important that you are honest because if you are not honest there are a lot of times which you can go there you can get derailed when i say derailed i i mean to say that in a sales profession there are a lot of means where you can get into some wrong way some shortcuts all right and let me tell you mr abhishek the shortcuts once you take the shortcuts and that's the end you might reach your short term goal maybe very fast but that would be the dead end you cannot go beyond it because when you take a shortcut you are not relying on your skills you are not relying on on what you have in you you are not relying in, relying on uh, you know your uh, your quality inside you you are relying on something else some you know there is something which is which is not actually ethical you are relying on something which is at least lead you too far it's going to lead you to some extent and then you will see it's, it's a dead end you, you cannot and that's a time when you cannot even take a u turn you cannot come back so that's very difficult so it's very important that you are self motivated it's very important that you are honest with yourself you are it is very important as a sales person as a pharmaceutical sales person and uh, you should be like uh, uh, you know have an uh, enthusiastic i i would say like uh, inquisitive mind because you need to be learning a lot of things every day to keep yourself updated every day because today what you have been told by your company Very tomorrow there might be something some new right up there might be some new uh, news which might have come up and you are not aware of it and when you are talking to a big uh, physician and if you are not aware of it you make fool of yourself and that doctor is not going to give you any respect so you need to keep learning and definitely as far as the skill sets are concerned you need to work on your skill sets slowly steadily working on working on your on your skill my mantra would be like strengthen your strength and weaken your weaknesses okay so this is something which i always uh, you know have been following because every person under the sun will have some or the other weaknesses and everybody who is born will definitely have some strength in it now how we 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 turn the strength into our you know it has to be an an armor for us we cannot go to the battlefield and we say that oh we are weak and we cannot fight whatever we have whatever ammunition we have we have to make that our strength so this is how i have been doing it so you know i i used to read a lot so whether it was and and uh, you know a journal a medical journal or it used to be a writer or something i used to read a lot and when you do this you get a lot of things to know and when you know things it becomes very easy for you to converse with the person who is is very educated group of guys in the society i'm talking about the doctors when i say this okay a very good planner when you are talking about your success 
until unless you plan your goals you do nothing you might be you might be thinking you might be having an ambition of uh, you know uh, maybe becoming a ceo of a, of a big company and you do not work towards it i always believe in having a high ambition you need to have a high ambition and i always had and i am high ambition and uh, at the same time you need to have short term goals and you need to have a plan to achieve those goals your plan should be ready with with your along with your goals okay fine i have today i have joined the profession i am a sales executive right now so where do i look myself after 3 years from now all right fine within this 3 years what all things i need to do what all things see because first 2 to 3 years it will require for any individual to learn what is the job all about you if somebody says no no i i know the job completely within 6 months of time i think uh, that's not true and that, that does not happen even i am today after 21 years even i feel that i learn you know every day this learning thing and i i keep learning every day believe me or not every day i think and i believe that i have learned something new right and it, there is no end to the learning there's no end to learn so in this first three years first few years you need to start to at the same time you need to work on it with the same at the at the third year or the fourth year or the five, fifth year of his career you will have you would have definitely uh, you know uh, developed himself you would have got a lot of uh, you know knowledge by then all right which you, which he can use it in his day to day day to day operations or day to day activities so these are few of the things which uh, which i personally believe and i follow so and i'm see i i still have a big a way to go it's a long long way all right i don't think that i have achieved what uh, what i wanted to achieve when <laughs> uh because there is saying that you aim for the stars at least you land up in the moon absolutely absolutely because you are planning big that is a great thing like you no know, to have but those who want to enter inside because i've heard i i read about you you always worked with uh, the largest of the largest companies and you performed the best of the best there you generated a sale you turned around the territories in no time what is the secret formula or secret sauce you can give to the people who want to enter inside mnc basically okay uh well mr abishe uh, yes i would agree to you that i was lucky enough uh, that i could work with uh, you know some of the big giants in the industry and probably in the world all right uh but you know, it it never came to me uh, you know easily all right and uh, i don't want to i don't want to say that i'm big i'm great or something no it's not like that you know when you are when as i told you you need to uh, you know aim big and once you aim big only then you start working towards that particular and i, and I always had an aim of working in in such big organizations well now coming back to your question like uh, how what would be my suggestions and uh, what would i would like what would i like to say to the newcomers who are planning to get into dmncs or something see here i would divide this question into two different parts it would be like see as i as i always say that i was lucky enough to Uh, you know join the industry with a big mnc okay. now i was lucky enough but to be very frank to get the job i had to go through the phases of interviews it was not uh, offered to me just like that and i had to perform in the interview so what do you mean to say is like for a fresher the approach would be different for a person who is already experienced and is working in the field the approach for him will be different 
Now, first talking about the guys who are who are freshers and who are like just who has come out of the college and would like to join the pharmaceutical sales and would like to get into it. I would say the best way is like go to the uh, you know the websites of those companies. See, I'm sure. Today you might be like, you might have some ambition, okay, I want to work for this company. I want to work for so-and-so company. But how do I put forward my resume? How do I put forward my qualities to them so that they come and hire me or they come and at least approach me and they call me? So the best way to do it is, is like, you know, get into their websites and uh, Nowadays, it's very easy. You know, you can register yourself with any big company. All big companies will have their websites. You can register yourself uh, into their website. You can you can actually share your uh, you know qualities, your skill sets, your education qualification, your experiences with those people. And depending upon you know the availability of their profile, they would definitely contact you. That's one way. And second way is like uh, there are a lot of uh, you know consultancies now you can you can just go through them okay there are a lot of people who works you know as a bridge between the uh, the newcomers as well as the, uh, the companies okay these are few of the ways and definitely if you know somebody personally who is already working in a pharmaceutical company you can approach them you can ask their help you can definitely get their help. Well, that's that's not very difficult and not uh, you know very tough as well. It's like that you have to do something basic to get into. Yes, one very important thing what a fresher should be doing to get into is to prepare himself. Now, you know I have seen many people because during my tenure I have been I have interviewed many people and. Uh, there was a mixed, uh, you know, candidates. It could be like a guy who is like an experienced guy who's a fresher. Sometimes, you know, when you when you talk to these freshers, you don't even feel like you even talking to them because you it feels really sad because this generation they have come for an interview and they do not even know what product the company deals with. So what I mean to say is, like, when you go to any, any interview, when you are trying to, uh, you know, like, uh, attend or you're trying to join some company, you know about the company, when you know about the product, okay, if possible, know a bit about the topography of the place and know a little bit about, you know, the role which you will be applying for. But the total, uh, you know, thing changes when you are already into the profession and you are into a company and you want to shift into an MNC or, or in a bigger company. The whole prospect changes changes there. Why? Because when I ask when I when I interview a guy, I would definitely want to know whether what extra thing he can he can give or he can provide to my company. Yes, I will give him training i will i will definitely look into his uh, skill upliftment all those things are definitely there as my uh, you know which of, and most of the companies nowadays are training oriented they will they will train their employees well everything will all be done but yes what why there are 10 guys who has come for the same post and why do i select one and i reject the nine so this guy should have some extra qualities now when i say extra qualities what do i what do I mean when I say extra qualities? This, this guy needs to know exactly how his, he should be very clear on his, on his uh, what do I say? His vision that why he wants to join the company. One, second is he, he needs to be prepared well. Now I would definitely expect a guy who is there in the profession to know about the company he's going for, you know, going to join. I would definitely like to know from him what would be my benefit if I take him. So he needs to prepare himself accordingly. There could be a lot of case studies that there could be a doctor who has not been writing. How can he convert the doctor? So these, these are the ways he can, he can actually 
uh, you know get through. Apart from that, obviously he also can get through the uh, you know the portals of such companies, right? And he can he can definitely register it himself. And once uh, you know there is a relevant opening, they keep getting the prompts. Apart from that, he can definitely uh, contact his colleagues who are already into that uh, company or or being into being into the profession, being into the field. It will be easier from there for for them to get the contacts rather than for a fresher. So this these are certain things, certain certain ways where they can. But yes, I would I would definitely harp upon one thing again and again is like he should be. Are different than others who are coming. So how he can be different, that is up to him. He could be a very good presenter. He could be a very good negotiator. That he has to prove in the, you know, in the discussions during the time of his interview discussions or whatever. So these are the ways he can prepare himself. These are the ways what he can do. He can, he can see and. I would I would say there is a drawback also when you interview a guy. Okay, it's quite possible that this guy might be a, a very good seller. He might be a top seller. He might be a, a top rank performer in his current company, and he has come to your company for an interview. How do you know he is a top rank performer? Okay, he he gives you his credentials that okay fine he has he has got he has achieved this uh, you know performance award this that so on and so forth. And many a times we, you know, we as an interview, we also do mistakes. We we are unable to uh, like get things from from the person. All right. So that's that becomes so he has to he has to sell himself first. That's what I want him to say. That he needs to sell himself first. He needs to show that uh, you know he is better than ten other people standing in the queue. Somehow, some or the other way, he has to. Prove us that only verbally saying that I am the performer in my current company will not fetch. Okay, he might he might give the reference of some big conversions he might have made in the market. Which see when I do a conversion for so and so doctor who is a big shot in the in the town or in the city or in the you know in the state or something, you know that that's that's a big thing. So these are some of the ways where you know a fresher and a guy who is already in the profession can prepare himself to get into the business. Okay, I heard uh, about you that wherever you go, whenever you go, you go to the new territory or old territory. You are known to turn around the territory as a manager, as an individual, turn around the territory. And turning out the territory happens only when the customers are there with you. Only when doctors are writing for you. So, what is the secret formula to convert the customer or convert the doctor? Uh, see, Mr. Abhishek, it's true that you know there are a lot of places where you know I was lucky enough that I got supported by uh, you know some of the big uh, doctors, KOLs, and all those guys. And uh, I would I would state here that. There is no single thumb rule to get you know a, a particular doctor right. All right. There is no one particular thumb rule. Now to get into it, you need to be like confident about first thing is about what you are saying, what you are uh, what you are presenting. Okay. Because many times it happens that, and I have seen it happening in front of me many times. You know. Uh, there was an instance which I would I would just uh, you know recall. Uh, you know there was there was a there was a doctor who was a very very senior doctor and he's a retired professor from a from a government college and he used to do a practice uh, you know of his own after his retirement and he had a very very big uh, you know a patient uh, followers. So what he did one I was just waiting for my turn with my team there. And uh, I could see this. There was another company coming, and he was asking about. He was talking to the doctor, and uh, they were actually, you know, talking about the combination of, uh, uh, you know, the pantoprazole with 
you know, I think it was with, uh, uh, it was, I think, Nadine or something. Okay. Uh, sorry, Tom put it on and, and uh, bank browser. So, uh, so the doctor asked him, like, why do you think I should write this combination? Because I have a plain bank browser with me. And you will not believe, Mr. Abhishek, I was sitting there and this doctor was a very senior doctor and this doctor used to ask a lot of questions to, you know, to the company people and uh, people used to be scared to, uh, you know, go to him because he used to ask many questions. And to my surprise, these people, they, they told they are this is and, uh, you know, it's and, uh, coated tablets and blah, 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 entry coated, these, that. Then uh, one particular person, the rep was saying, said this combination is irrelevant. The moment he said this combination is irrelevant, the doctor got wide. He said, you are saying that this combination of pantoprazole and domperidone is irrelevant. And there are a lot of physicians who writes this combinations. And uh, he was saying that you are promoting a product and you are saying that your product is irrelevant. Your combination is irrelevant. So why do I write? So what I need to say is, and they were talking about, uh, you know, entry coated tablet and I don't know. They, they, they took the doctor to chromatography and all those things. I was, how was chromatography related to, to, to this combination? I was, I was a bit surprised. So anyway, my why I wanted to share this is like when you are talking to the doctors, you need to be very clear on what you are talking, what you are communicating. So the best thing is like when you when you go to a doctor, I personally I do before I enter, I, I try to find out like how what is the what is that that this doctor likes. Some doctors they do not like to talk much. Some doctors they like to talk. And if you're talking about my conversions, I would say what I used to do is I used to find out that why he has not been writing all this time. So once you find out the reason for something, you automatically get the solution for it. All right. So there were a lot of doctors, they never used to write for me. And I've also faced it. It's not so. And even today also with my team, when I go, I try to find out what exactly they want. Because many times, like I, the incident I told you just a while back, they are, so, there are some miscommunication. I'm not saying the miscommunication always happens knowingly. Unknowingly also, there will be some mistakes which we guys, we pharma sellers, we do. That actually in between. So as a manager, so as a as a senior rep, my my job would be to find out what exactly is that, and if at all is there anything which which has been spoken wrongly, which is heading up to write my brand, I would try to find out that. How do I find out? I would be going and probing him. See, it's always better to get. You know, I, I always tell this to my my team and uh, you know my juniors, whomever I meet. It's always better to allow the customer to speak. Make them speak. You will know only when they start speaking. Okay. Once they start speaking, and when I put words into their mouth, that okay, fine. I think that this particular drug has got this. This molecule has got this. Then I would like to ask him, okay, fine, sir. With all due respect, you are saying that it has got this. But did you, uh, where you've been told that uh, this also has this? Okay. Now, you need to see, it happens that food is not correct. So you will not write. Probably there are five indications for one particular molecule to be prescribed. And one, two, three, four, five indications are there. He doesn't get patients with first, second indications. Okay, 
third indications you will get a more patients with with more of the third indications which we, we speak but unfortunately the third indication was not highlighted to him how does he write to him how does he write to a product? He a product because he feels that this product will not be good for the indication kind of indication my patient has simple as that so you need to ask probe the doctor and the probing does not say, hey, why you are not reading? You need to ask him, sir, is there any concern like which is holding you up? You need to find out, so they, you need to give him information. You need to, and this is the only way, you know, I get to convert, you know, the big doctors. And obviously, you need to make a very good rapport, a relation with us. And only then they will start. And how do you make that? It, you will you will have a good relation with the doctors only when you start talking to them sense if you talk nonsense like you know this domperidone and uh, pantoprazole is a needle relevant combination if you talk they will throw you out they will never respect you because that's a very well expect it's, it's a well a well accepted combination it's being uh, like it's it's a boom in the market like a lot of people are uh, you know doctors are prescribing that so now you go and go to a senior doctor and say, sir, it's really bit. That's, that's a loose talk. So you need to avoid loose talk. And when you are trying to convert, you need to prove the doctor, get to know what does he want from that particular molecule, from that particular product, and then pitch your product accordingly. So this is this is the basic mantra. Nothing, there is no rocket science in it. You just have to listen to the doctor what he says. Give him a, just probe him, wait, listen to him what he says, and then from what he says, you need to find out, okay, fine, these are the missing links. And once you find the missing links, you fill the gap there. Very much for the greatest wisdom you have given. What is the importance of training in the pharmaceutical field? I would say uh, it's very, very important. Uh, because now training, I would like to, uh, you know, just clarify something here. Training does not only mean a classroom training inside, uh, you know, the four walls where, you know, your trainer comes and gives you this. That is also important. That is very, very important. It is very important. But in a pharmaceutical sales, I consider uh, on, you know, on job, say, on job training, that is more important and that's more relevant. Yes, classroom training, I'm again saying that if you do not know about the molecule, you do not know how to, uh, you know, handle the objections about that molecule, or you do not know how to pitch that particular molecule in front of a doctor, you're gone. So for that, it's definitely, it is very, very important that you are trained well inside the four walls, inside, uh, you know, by the uh, company trainers and all. But definitely, there are a lot of trainings which you can, uh, do by yourself, all right? You need to enhance your training is nothing but enhancing or, or developing your knowledge. So that can either be done by your company trainer or it can be done by yourself. So when you do by, when I say yourself, in today's world, I would say that today's generation are very lucky that they have a lot of means, uh, you know, to learn things. In our days, during our time, like, we only had few journals, we only had some, uh, you know, uh, uh, printing stuff, which we could. We never had this big legacy of, the, you know, we could not get into an internet anytime and every time we wanted and get to know the things. Now it's just a click, a click away. You want to know something, you just type in into Google and just Google it out, you get the information right away. It was not so during our time. We used to... During our time, if we had to learn something, we had to ask so many people. Even, you know, we used to ask some doctors, doctors, if you can just help me with this, this particular thing. We used to ask our trainers, we used to ask our seniors, bosses, everywhere. Like, you know, that is how you, know, you do. Yes, and coming back to our training, training definitely, it is, it is as I said, even now, you can do certain courses to train yourself. And see, there are a lot of online courses you can you can take up and you can learn a lot of things. You can enhance your skills. As I said, enhancing your skills, you know, it's like 
training yourself to uh, you know eventually and that that will happen by uh, you know when you when you go to go to the field and do practice another to see i once i was listening to uh, one interview of one of a very famous personality uh, in india and not in india in the whole world actually uh, sachin tendulkar and who does not know sachin tendulkar so he was asked like what do you think is the same question as you asked me like your training he said yes i do train but until and unless i execute what i learned in that 22 yards it's nothing the training will be with me and all these skills will be with me i have to utilize it so whatever you learn you try to utilize it in your day to day uh, work and uh, see knowing things learning new things does not mean that you become a master and you strip you straight away go to the field and start teaching the doctors hey man i i learned this i know this no you always need to be you always need to know that the doctors are doctors and you are not there to teach the doctors you are not there to teach anybody in the field you are there just to give them some information see we guys we pharma sales guys we are not we are not the trainers for doctors I'm sorry okay we will just go there and we we try to explain them what is good what is bad what is what about our product simple as that so training as i said it would be definitely a very very important tool uh, for success okay it can come into uh, you know in any form it can be a classroom training it can be it can be into uh, you know through any kind of online classes and it can be it can be like uh, through you know your uh, courses for business schools or whatever you think I've already given very very much important information for a pharma professional to grow, launch himself in the pharma industry and grow in the pharma industry. What is the last piece of advice you want to give it to the people who are interested in entering inside or working to the working in the pharma industry? Um, see, I would take a couple of couple more minutes to answer this. there is not only one thing here mr abhishek there are few things that he should have in him first is that today i tell somebody that was uh, you know pharma industry is a booming industry pharma sales is booming so you get into it no it's not it. you need to listen to your heart you need to listen to your knack you need to listen to your uh, you know your interest first thing second thing if you want to get into pharma sales particularly pharma sales you need to be having certain uh, set of skills one would I, i would say that you should have uh, you know honesty in yourself you should be hard working guy if you do not have all this you see you you will not be you cannot go far with this profession you might you might i'm saying that you may not get into you will definitely get into any company you will, you will definitely work you can work for 2 3 5 years and then you might perish that's that's way of that's what i'm saying apart from that you should be a self motivated guy because many times it is like required that you know many times you get to hear no especially in sales there are more of more of no's rather than more of yes so you need to because every time your boss will not come and pick you up every time he will not be around so you need to motivate yourself apart from that you need to have a goal in your uh, you know your uh, work like okay fine you want to where you want to go you need to have a proper plan to support that particular goal and obviously at the last i would say you should be very greedy and you should be you should have a clear instinct in you so whatever come may whatever it is like whatever is the reason i don't care i, I don't bother i will have to do this that's that's how it has to be there and i i want to win i will win that killer instinct has to be there because as i told you you need to be very rigid on on your decisions of like i'm not saying rigid on when i say rigid it's not like you know i will not do this i will not do that i will not i will not talk to this doctor properly i will not uh, you know fill up my uh, my you know report forms properly it's not that rigid means that if i am doing something 
I need to achieve it. And if I'm not able to achieve it, I need to be rigid enough to try it again, again, till the time I reach and I, I get the success. Thank you very much for your valuable time and valuable suggestion with all the information, all your 21 years of experience. You have crystalled it down with a lot of good stories and good examples you have given here, which is going to be very, very useful for the pharma professionals working in the sales profession or those who want to enter inside the sales profession in the pharma industry. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanjay. Thank you for your valuable time. and. Wish you all the best for the future. Uh, for you. Thank you very much. I wish you the same, and uh, I hope uh, you too succeed in your, uh, you know, in your career. And uh, all the good wishes to you. Thank you to you, and thank you for your viewers. Thank you. Thank, thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.